I really love dance. I feel like if I have like a rough day the next morning, I'm like, okay, what can I do different? Because I feel like you can't make it this far. Like I'm 22 now, you can't make it this far without having some sort of love for dance because not only would it be like a waste of money, like it's a waste of time if you don't really love it because it's like you have to be completely committed to it or else it's just like, why are you doing it? I believe I was around two or three when I first started my dance training. Um, and then in 2010, my mom and I moved to Chicago. And then I went to performing arts high school um, when I was of age, obviously. And I think that's when I was starting to become more serious because of course it's a big commitment to go to school every day and then dance after you finish school. I'm a scholarship student at the Ailey School and the Rockettes came maybe about a month before the auditions and did a workshop and the second workshop that we did I was like okay I think I want to go to the audition like I think I'm ready. I was number one in line. I had the first number out of the whole group. I was there bright and early, ready to go. So I, like I said, have been dreaming about being a Rockhead since I was a young girl. I always knew that it was something that I wanted to do. My studio at home in Florida offered belly dancing classes and when I was younger, my mom just put me in all the classes that she could put me into because I was just like obsessed with dancing. <laughs> my dad was born in Pakistan and he only lived there for a couple years until he moved to London. My house growing up wasn't too immersed in the Pakistani culture, but they always had like Pakistani and Indian movies playing on the TV, you know, with like all the singing and dancing. I think like my parents say that's kind of when I started dancing around the house, like every time the music would come on in those movies, I just like couldn't help but move. I would just get so excited. It really has to do a lot with that culture and that music that really brought out my love for dance and showed that to my parents. And they were like, hey, let's put her in dance class. And <laughs> here I am now. We are here today to audition Rockettes for the Christmas Spectacular. We have more than 800 women here to audition today, so it is double the duty, but I think we've set it up, hopefully we'll see, so that the auditionees have a lot of time to learn the combination, so when they come into the large rehearsal hall, which is where I'll be, um, they, they feel prepared and confident and calm and can do their best work. We are dancing for four eights, which isn't a ton of time. I've never auditioned for the Rockettes, this is my first time. I looked around and I was like, oh, where are all the other black girls? I think I maybe only saw like one in my audition group and I was like, okay. I mean, I kind of expected that just because 80 years ago, you look at the line and it did not look like anything like it is today. In the past, the Rockettes, you you know, when you think about it and you look, it's like all white women. And that is not only unfair to black women, but it's unfair to the truth of what the United States is and what the dance community looks like. We always knew we wanted to, but there was something that always stopped that dream because we knew that there's no one else that looks like me, so maybe I don't have that chance. What young aspiring dancer does not aspire to be a rocket? audiences coming from all over to be able to see themselves on stage matters. Representation matters. The balance of it matters.
will stay and you're going to head towards that door. Everyone else, thank you so very much. You're going to head out that door. All right? Thank you again for all your work and your energies today. I did the first combination and then I got cut. <laughs> Also, we're looking for people to uh, join our conservatory, our dancer conservatory this summer. That will be a five-day program that is invite only, and we're going to train people in tap, ballet, and jazz, and also learn rocket choreography. It's all inclusive. They get to come here and work for five days, training with all sorts of different people, not only the Rockettes, but there'll be people here from Ailey and other organizations that do some Horton classes, and we'll get some tap technique and some ballet technique. So we're, we're investing in them and our future, really. People just started feeding in like hundreds of girls, and that's when, you know, I got little butterflies in my stomach. I was like, this is happening. Like, everyone looked beautiful in their red lip and their French twist. That's when I started getting nervous. They took us downstairs. We learned a little short combo with some current Rockettes, which was really cool to just like, you know, be in person with them. That was amazing. So I was trying not to be too starstruck while we were learning the combination because I was like, I need to focus and, you know, get all the details. So the first day they just had us do that short 20 second combination and then they did a big cut which was really nerve wracking but they called my name and I was there to stay till day two so I came back the next day. There was a lot less women there which was just crazy to think about how they went from like I think it was over 800 women to you know a couple hundred at that point. It was genuinely a really loving and supporting environment and honestly that just made me want the job even more. I think the first time I saw the show, I was immediately hooked. I was like, I need to be up on that stage of Radio City Music Hall. They're just such a strong line of women and I just fell in love with precision dance and what they do. You get to dance, you get to be at Radio City performing. It's a Christmas show, it's full of joy. I mean, there's nothing more you could ask for. <laughs> Hey ladies! Hey ladies! One more thing I want to tell you, I'm not going to make any more cuts. Does that make everyone feel better? <laughs> After our auditions in April, it was a big waiting game, you know, it was the only thing that was on my mind for a while. Eventually, some of us got an email inviting us to the Rockettes Conservatory. It explained all the details, how it was a no-cost dancer development program, and, you know, we'd be fully taken care of, which was awesome. When I got the email um, with the invite to come to the conservatory, I was like, okay, yes, I can finally learn more and see what I missed because obviously there's something missing if I got cut. I think just I'm very grateful to be able to take the time to get into the technique and learn so much more about like what the Rockettes are about. Coming into the conservatory, I like to spend that first day on getting to know the dancers, who I'm working with, what can they do, what do I need to do, what's my goal. I'm not here to train for ballerinas, but I am here to give them the tools and the foundation of ballet so that they're able to apply them to any genre of dance. Rockets train and tap, they do a little bit of jazz. So the, what they're getting from the ballet classes with me, again, they can apply to tap, jazz, all of what the Rockettes do. You know, when I think of diversity within the Rockettes, it's an opportunity. They see that on stage, and then they think, wow, I can do that. You know, I'm here teaching the Rockettes, and I am like, individuality, individuality, which you might, which you think might be counterintuitive to women preparing to dance as one. But when in fact, when you are so sure of yourself and your individuality, you can actually fall into a line much easier 
because you're in control of your body. You know what you're doing. You don't feel like a robot. Because even though these women are in a line and they're doing the same thing, you always have standouts. When we think about diversity in dance, and you think about companies like, like Alvin Ailey, like Dance Theater Harlem, that created spaces for black dancers in ballet, in modern dance, in spaces where black people weren't really accepted, or, wore, or if, if they were included, had to kind of like pacify their blackness in many ways. And so those spaces are extremely important for us to have. But it's also, just as important for people of color to diversify white spaces and traditionally white spaces without feeling like we have to lose our blackness or lose ourselves or lose our curves or lose our natural hair or you know lighten up our makeup when we go on stage What we see here this kind of intentionality and curation to really grow and be thoughtful is incredibly important and makes the organization, the Rocket organization, leaders. They're moving forward and they're actualizing on it. So to see yourself lets you know that you have a place there you can dream and you can strive and you can work to get towards that goal. Oh, I feel like encouraging is the word that comes to mind when I see someone like who looks like me because I'm like okay I know someone like me has done this before and there's like a path kind of set for me. As a woman of color and truly understanding that I am one of the few and that seeing myself in these elevated positions and you know even when I do a, t a television interview I know that there's like a tiny little Danelle somewhere who taps into the Rockettes a bit more because she sees somebody who looks like her. Reach for double pirouette five Six, stepping out of it, seven, eight. This arm is almost like it rushes across the side of your cheek. I like that image. It took me three times to, to get hired and I could feel that they were encouraging, that they, they wanted me to succeed, that they noticed the growth that I made. So each step of the way, I felt welcomed. I understand a lot of these dancers who have, you know, their early backgrounds like me, where, you know, where they, aren't necessarily like, okay, I'm gonna go be a rockette right now. You know, it's just sort of opening a door and I love the fact that I can be the view of that, the picture of that, the image of that, the idea of that, and, and you know, I, I, I root for these dancers. I'm like, come on, come on over. Like, it's one thing to say it, but then to actually make it accessible to other people is like when you actually start to see the change happen and for them to actually like stick to their word and then like prove it to us is like really powerful I believe because if I was invited and then I also had to get the shoes and then try to figure out all the other moving parts when you usually go to a summer intensive because I also had to invest earlier in the summer um, in the other programs that I attended it would have been kind of like mm, maybe next year like maybe once I save up more money but because it's like all expenses paid I was like okay yes I'm ready to do this well, when you think about it, dance is expensive. <laughs> you know, I think about the sacrifices that my parents made to help nurture this career that I've been able to grow in. Um, and I think that's why it's so important for us to have this conservatory and to continue to do this outreach and to be the one in the room, creating that opportunity, opening their eyes, giving them the skills that I've learned. So I continue to try and pass everything on because it is, it's hard growing up in the dance world. And especially if you come from an underprivileged community, it's hard to get the training that I was blessed to have. But you know, it was like my parents were putting me out there, like go audition, try and get a scholarship. So I always had this approach of, you have to put the time in to get the results that you want. And I think my parents understood that. And so I try and pass that on. My whole family has been extremely supportive. I have been very blessed with parents that have supported my dreams ever since I was young. I wouldn't say we were well off, but they definitely 
you know, did everything they could to get me what I needed. With the conservatory, since it was no cost and, you know, we were all taken care of, you know, travel expenses, meals, um, even Laducas, like that was just incredible. It really showed me that the Rockheads were making an effort to be more inclusive and, you know, scouting out dancers from these programs such as the Ailey School where I attend and Dance Theater of Harlem and it just, it feels really good to know that they are making an effort. After all those technique classes, we went into some of the Rockettes choreography that they do in the show, which was also very challenging. You know, they make it look so easy on stage, but in reality, you're trying to be that precise and being on your number, it's a lot in your mind at one time. So it was overwhelming, but at the end of the day, I like I just fell in love with it even more. During conservatory week there was one day where I think it was the very first day actually when we started doing some choreography for, from the actual Christmas Spectacular. Um, the first thing we learned was the kick line from New York at Christmas. You know the iconic they're in their red and green dresses and they're doing this giant kick line on stage and you know it's like Times Square in the background and there's fireworks like this whole production and we learned the kick line from that and I think the first time that we did that with the music, you know, all of us in a line together kicking at the same time, that it like kind of hit me and I got a little teary eyed because it was just, it, it just felt surreal to be in Radio City doing a kick line from the show that the Rockheads do with just um, incredible women next to me. It just felt like an honor and I got a little emotional because it's just what I want to do. I think it's been really successful actually because there are some dancers that didn't do so great at the audition but I saw something there, I saw some technique or something that I could grasp onto and having watched them for a week or five days, some of them ten days that were invited to the second session, I'm like wow they have really turned it on, they've really grasped what we're talking about, they have amazing technique, they're engaged, they're in it, they're willing to learn because I think the dancing part on on one hand as a rocket is, is Sometimes the easier part, it's the next layers that we add on, meaning the numbers and the lines that are on the stage, because that adds a whole other dimension. When you're just dancing and enjoying it, it's great, but when you can only move two numbers and you can only move two feet downstage, it adds a whole other, or you're going to run into somebody, you're going to knock somebody over. So it's, it's getting used to that process as well. It's one thing to kick by yourself, it's a whole other thing to kick in a line of women and make sure that you're kicking at exactly the same tempo. So there's a lot of that involved. Going into the April auditions, being my first time, I didn't even think there was a possibility. Then from there getting invited to conservatory and getting invited to the final auditions, it kind of proved to me that I could have a chance at getting the spot in the line. Overall, I think my confidence has boosted because I feel like I've learned so much coming up to today. Plus, I do know some of the other girls, which has helped me feel more comfortable. I think now I'm like, oh, all this hard work, like I want it so bad now. On a scale of one to 10, I would like to be a rockette. I think maybe about like a thousand at this point, yeah. <laughs> This job as a Rockette is so incredible that, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be 17 years this fall for me. So, you know, we have a line of women who, who, st who become, we call them career Rockettes. That's what I am. Um, but then there are also women who maybe come in and do the show for a year, do it for two years, do it for five years and then move on. So what I think is wonderful about the Rockettes, and I think this is something that sort of keeps us evolving, is that there always is a turnover. There's always this constant ebb and flow of the company. And so it, it continues to like change and grow expectation and I'm sure, you know, with limited spots available, you're sort of limited in and of itself. You know, <laughs> if you have if you have ten spots, you have ten spots. You know, you can't create eleven spots. So it I mean it does make it difficult, but I also think creating the awareness that we are a line that should be more reflective of this city and this world that we live in. It changes um, how we act and how we approach things and how we approach auditions, which for instance, how we're doing so much outreach now. So now 
in being so much more visible and, and vocal about how we do want to make change, it attracts more dancers, it attracts more diversity. So then at auditions, we're seeing more diverse dancers and that's, you know, it creates, it opens up the room simply by us um, making the statement and doing the actions of, look, we want to do better, we want to grow. Like those simple statements, it actually opens up access. It's about being fair to the dancers because I know what it's like to not be that person that gets chosen. I don't want to give somebody the opportunity if they're a dancer of color but not ready because then it doesn't behoove any of us, right? I want to make sure that they are ready for the job and that will only make them last in the job and be fulfilled in the job if they are truly ready. If, if I try to push somebody too soon, it's not good. It's not good for the line and it's not good for that person. So I want to make sure that I do the right thing for all. I'm here for the invited call. This is day one. I'm very excited. And yes, I'm really excited to get started. I'm feeling great. No complaints. <laughs> Ready to dance. It's day two of the invited auditions for the Radio City Rockettes. Um, I'm really excited, feeling great. I'm feeling exhausted, but like in an accomplished way. I'm like, okay, I made it through and we'll wait till the end of the week to see if I get a call. They've really been stressing like it's a sisterhood and like I could really feel that today, especially they were so willing to help us, even though we're all competing. Oh yes, I'll be back in April, or whenever the next auditions are, they will see me again. I was taking a nap. I woke up from my nap and I was just like laying in my bed. About five minutes later, I get a call from a number from New York. It didn't have a name or anything. It was just a random number, but it was from New York. And I was like, oh no, I don't get calls like this often. <laughs> like something must be up. So I answered it and I just said, hi. And then I just hear, you know, this is Gary from Radio City, and my jaw just dropped. And he said, I would like to offer you the official role to be a Rockette in the 2022 Christmas Spectacular. And from there on out, I just like, I, I honestly couldn't even hear what he was saying because I was just like so flustered in the moment of like, am I still like taking a nap? Is this a dream? Like what's going on? I think that the Rockettes are making strides, definitive strides, to creating these conduits and creating these partnerships. And it may take a while, um, and then there may be dancers when some of these dancers go home and talk to their friends, talk to their studio owners, talk to their dance leaders, and it may grow in ways that we're not even aware of. There has to be not exactly patience, but there needs to be realistic but intentional expectations as this continues to go and the sincerity and the authenticity that they're approaching this with speaks volumes as well. So it's not just the words where it's going to happen and then we may not see it. It is really in development and continues to be in development. On three you're going to yell Radio City Rockets. We have 18 new Rockettes this year and I am thrilled to have them all in the room with us ready to work. The conservatory was a huge, huge piece to this puzzle and it, I think it's really prepared the 17 of the 18 new women. I feel like I've been able to do more work during our early sessions than I have in the past because we've already started, we've already have the foundation. 
it feels like such an honor to represent my heritage as a Pakistani girl in the line. Um, the Rockettes are really working on diversifying the line, so I am so honored that I get the opportunity to be that person for girls like me that come to see the show every year. It just, it feels amazing to be that representation.